Eight years have passed since James Earl Ray began serving a 99-year prison sentence for the assassination of Dr. King. Police with bloodhounds on the ground, helicopters in the air, all of them scouring a five-square-mile area in the rugged Tennessee hill country around the maximum security Brushy Mountain Prison near Petrus, Tennessee. The object of their manhunt, six convicts, including James Earl Ray. Getting out of Brushy Mountain Prison is one thing. Others have done it. But getting out of Morgan County is something else. Brushy Mountain and neighboring Frozen Head rise up sharply behind the prison to 3,000 feet, and this is rough country. When James Earl Ray escaped, and I'd, I'd been backpacking up here for years before that, so we watched it on TV like everyone else. And we were laughing at him only making eight and a half miles in 54 hours. And I said, you know, in that length of time, I could have gone 100 miles because I was young and cocky. <laughs> And all of it came together and the Barkley was born. I just like the challenge. When I was in high school running a faster 5K, that was a challenge. Now that I'm out and in the adult world, running fast isn't quite as attractive as a challenge for me. It's more how far can I go? How crazy of a course can I compete? You know, what, what are my limits in terms of endurance, not speed? I'm a very type A person and just having a plan for my day makes it a lot easier for me to live day to day and having fitness activity of some sort be part of that makes me feel better about myself and gives me something to plan my day around besides work which if work was my focus it'd be a pretty boring life. The initial attraction was the difficulty level at the time, I still really had no conception of what my limits were for endurance or <laughs> stubbornness. After that, it was learning about just kind of the, the crazy community that makes up the people who do Barkley. People who are so devoted to the race and, and want to do it year after year, and even if they don't get in, love it and want to be there and to support it and, and just buy into the Barkley culture. That kind of community is very attractive to me. I've always had a tendency to run. My mom says, I started walking when I was nine months old and I hadn't walked since. That everywhere I go, I run. It was one of the greatest accomplishments in my life to be the first finisher of, of the Barkley. It's become very important to me. Last year, I came close to thinking I should give it up because for the first time in 17, attempts last year, I did not finish the first loop within the time limit. As I've gotten older and slower, and the Barkley has gotten bigger and harder, it becomes a real challenge for me just to do a loop or two. What's at stake for me is to still be the best runner I can. So I would say some self-respect is, is uh, in it for me. It's hard for me to think that I won't be able to do it. Almost every other hundred mile out there, the lack of a finish 
is a failure. At Barkley, the lack of finishing five loops is technically a failure, but my understanding is it doesn't feel like a failure. You go as far as you possibly can and learn what that distance, what that capacity is. We have a, a lot of really educated people. Most of them are people who are very successful. They like challenges, they're used to succeeding, and they're not afraid to try something where they'll probably fail. It, it has an appeal to them to know that they have to fight the odds. He used to be a pretty prolific runner, ultra runner himself. The race is, is his personality, so as quirky, as unique of a race that the Barkley is, he, he's the same way. To some extent, many of the features of the Barkley were created as a parody of the sport. When typical race events hit the $1 a mile guideline for entry fees, he, he set the Barkley entry fee at one penny per mile. It's not a feat of finance. I look at a lot of what people do and I think, well, it's not really a feat of athletics, it's a feat of finance. This is a feat of athletics. The guy right there, Jared Campbell, he's won hard rock, pretty much alpine climbing as a 100-mile race. Two years ago was my first year I came in pretty blind. I had never been to the park. I felt kind of like a tourist in a sense. I mean, I was really uh, dependent on other people to get around the park. I really loved the experience. It was a really, uh, really neat thing to go through, but I, I really kind of wanted to come back and do it on my own, which is why I came back last year um, and wanted to come back again because last year didn't quite go the way I wanted it to. <laughs> Nobody knows when it's going to start right now. It's between midnight and noon. We've started as early as 2 a.m., as late as 11 o'clock in the morning. So as far as planning what you're carrying and what you're doing, we blow that conch an hour before the start. It comes down to each person's individual mental strength and physical capability. Now, how long till the light comes on? Awesome pair of you guys. I'm going to start. I like this. 30 seconds. You got to run really, really fast today. Okay. 10 seconds. Good luck, guys. Good luck. Enjoy. Good luck. 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 Good With the Barkley, there's no hand-holding, there's, there's no markings, you're off trail for a good portion of it, uh, you're going strictly by map and compass, and you're on your own, so it's really pushing people to limits that they've never been asked to be pushed to in a typical ultramarathon, and that's, I think, what the big draw is for this. We set up the lottery so that it's not just for the elite, elite athletes, because I think everyone should have a chance to really put themselves to the test. But you haven't tested your limit until you try something you can't do. Then you know where your limit is. It's right there where I quit. That was, that was it. It's not really a race against necessarily the other people who are running, but it's just more a uh, competition kind of against yourself and the clock. Historically, you know, there's been such a few number of finishers that it was just a person who could go 
uh, the longest and kind of endure the longest. And that person generally would be, you know, the, the, the winner, if there were a winner. At some point, you're going to hurt so bad that if you give yourself an excuse to stop, you're going to stop. So there can't be any excuses. And it's, you know, at, at, at certain points, it's almost 100% mental. There's no physical really left. And it's just, can I push through this? Whatever I'm dealing with, can I push through what's left? The nature of it, that it is purposely adjusted and created to be at the limit of possibility. Uh, that to me is unique in the world of sports. Certainly you need to be physically fit for it. I mean, it's a gnarly course. It's, it's really long, tons of vertical, both up and down, things that I really love. But the navigation is really tricky. You always keep it with slight changes. Otherwise, you, people just come and they know the whole race. And then you can just start doing it by repetition. There should always be something in there where every runner has to, they have to stop and think. We put books out there like unmanned checkpoints and you see me giving them their numbers and they get that page out of the book and then they bring them back. Called the bad place in this book. Seems appropriate. And if they don't have one of their pages, they, their loop doesn't count. And it happens. It happened last year. It was it was tragic. No time for tears. What's your page number? You have to have a, a good sense of humor if you if you're just totally serious about the whole thing, it would be torture. And you have to be serious about what you do, but you need to be able to laugh at yourself because you may be walking back down Quitter's Road no matter how well you prepared or how good you are. If something goes wrong and it doesn't have to be your fault. That was you the did a fantastic greatest job. experience ever. Just enjoyed every minute of it. Why it was not easier than you expected. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, not, no, <laughs> no. I only regret fun. you could not have suffered longer. <laughs> Thank you. My 18th time here at Barkley is the first time I ever quit during Loop 1. The, con but the conditions are horrible. I'm cold and wet. But we're still proud of you. Could not do it. Okay. Still proud of you. Too cold and wet. Good and slippery. Good it was real out. slippery. I could hardly stay on my feet. I did what I could. I'm not ashamed. Unlike many 100 mile events that you go and attempt, every uh, 10, 12 hours, you are back at the start finish line. The availability to end your race is much more accessible. Have your stuff just dialed in, get in and get out as fast as you can. Don't allow yourself to kind of get lulled into the, to the creature comforts because it's, it's a deadly move. I was feeling really good. I was I was happy that I was going to finish a loop, that I would officially be a veteran, that I was going to come into camp in decent shape with no major issues. And so coming off a chimney top on that runnable mark trail, I flew. I mean, I was moving surprisingly well, and that just filled me with a lot of confidence. Well, 317, you're on your own now.
I was uncomfortably cold, but not hypothermic. My hands were having some trouble moving. I was having some trouble eating, but I could still choke calories down. My feet were rough, but they weren't completely sore. They mentally break. You know, 60 hours, no sleep, constant climbing and descending. You have to find yourself on a map. There's no, no pacers to find the way. You're out there by yourself all day and all night. There was nothing about me that I would say was going well or that I could rely on as a reservoir of strength. I just, I couldn't find it within myself to mentally power through all the things that were going wrong. And so I chose to come back. I wasn't tough enough this year. If someone goes out and they make a mistake or they, they go through a period of weakness, they're gone. You have to do everything right and you can never waver, but it can be done. By the time that, especially when you get on into it, you want them to succeed so bad. They've gone through so much, they've done so much to do it. I'm very fond of these people, the ones that, the ones that get out there and and, and are willing to take on that kind of a challenge. Uh, my hat is off to them, even whether they succeed or fail. The Barkley is very internal. Nobody comes out here for fame. Until a few years ago, very few people even knew about this race. They're out here to say, yeah, I did it. I did one lap or three laps or five laps. And that's the reward. As Les says, the reward is not having to go out again. Well, they all failed. It was a magnificent <laughs> failure. <laughs>
Bring it home. Nice work. Thank you. If you got 13 pages. <laughs> I sure hope I do. I count 13, man. Do you want to recount? No. I'll trust you. Thanks a lot, Lass. Great job. Thank you. See them sit there as they always do. For some reason, after they touch the yellow gate the last time, they just kind of, it's like you cut the strings on a, what is there, a marionette? <laughs> they just, someone will be there with a chair and they just sit there and you can see this, the extremes of joy that can come with sports that you only get when failure was probable. You feel like uh, you have a little bit of a, a duty to finish. <laughs> if you're the only one out there on loop four and five, uh -huh. it's kind of interesting. Like thinking about everyone here. I, have to get, I guess I better drag my ass to the table. Yeah, that's <laughs> and there was some bragging going on. <laughs> yeah, it was not not the proudest running I've ever done. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Lass. Dangerous. Oh, I what appreciate you event. coming. It's what it's a unique inspiring. Event. Inspiring every time. It's a unique thing that you've created here. Unique little beast. The runners have made it what it is. Every time someone finishes, I feel like I am just elevated by being there. To have seen something that difficult achieved. 